one of the greatest Christian rockers that there is. And all of a sudden, I hear Bill Gaither sing it. <laughs> and I'm like, David and Bill are doing a duet on this? This is incredible. And I can't quit listening to it. And then I'm walking down the beach looking for the sun to come up. And I'm watching and I'm thinking, I'm singing this song. As I'm seeing this new hope for a new day. And the chorus is just a perfect four-point sermon. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And the life is worth the living because he lives. Now, that's the kind of thing that if you start out each day thinking about those four parts, that really gets you through the day. Do you know that? If you can start going out and just singing that, and singing that chorus and looking, because I'm telling you, it's scripture. And there's scripture that goes with that. And that's what we're going to look at today. And the thing is, is that the world tries to get us to not believe those four things. And do you believe this? And before we go into God's word, let's pray. God, we come to you today just because you're such an awesome God. And you do so many things for us. We think about because he lives. And what that means to us. And uh, your son does live. We serve a risen Savior. And because of that, uh, we can face tomorrow. We don't need to be afraid. We know who is in charge. And it makes such a great life for us. We thank you for this life. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would touch others. That they know and believe this and understand it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to go through the four points in a four-point sermon if you're taking notes. And the first point is, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Times are sure tough, aren't they? I mean, if you follow the news and stuff, there may be a war in Washington, D.C. today. There's all kinds of different hate groups there to all just go after each other. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they could all just forget it and go to church? And think about Jesus, but they're there today to post off about how they hate this race and they hate this group of people and this group of people hates this group of people and this group of people hates this group of people and they just drive each other. And then you just see how mean people are to each other. I had, I had the other night, I'm at, I'm at the, our last night at the motel. And of course, we can't have a perfect week. So we go up to scan the room key because it's one of those places where you just take the credit card like thing and run across the thing and the door opens and we run across nothing. Run across nothing. Run across nothing. So we get down to the office and they said, oh, yeah, we just screwed up. Here's two new keys. So we go back up to the room. Run across nothing. Run across nothing. So I go back down and the guy says, oh, that happens every once in a while. Your batteries are dead. He said, uh, we'll get hold of such and such the mechanic and he'll be right there. He's, I'm calling him now. He's going to meet you guys there and and he'll fix the thing. So we're walking back, and this really strange looking guy comes up and he says, Hey, you stay in here. Grabs my shirt. Sammy's going, Don't tell him, Dad. Don't tell him. I said, Yeah, I'm staying here. What's up? He said, Our room's full of bed bugs. And he said, They're giving us the whole week for free. You better go check everything. You go check everything. So. I go there and we wait 35 minutes for the guy to come fix the batteries, standing outside the front door of our room. At that point, I'm not waiting anymore. And I got a kid that can bench press 320 telling me he wants to know if it's okay if he kicks the door in. I said, well, let me go down to the desk. So I get down to the desk and I tell him to have a guy come here and meet me and we'll walk together. So we're walking together and I tell him about the the guy with the bed bugs. He said, yeah, I'll tell you about the guy with the bed bugs. He said, uh, I went up there to check everything out. There were some bed bugs there. There was also a jar in the corner of the room that had air holes punched in the top. He said they did that to get a free vacation. And you know, it, it, it's really a weird world, and life is scary. And even in the church, we find that for people, a tough word is hope. Oh, People misquote the scripture. Jesus said that he has come to bring us life in the fullest. He, he's not talking just about heaven. Oh yeah? 
He's talking about now, today. When you get out of bed, He's come to bring you life in the fullest. He has come to give you everything. Not the things that you want, you know, cars, money. But what do you draw your hope from? What is your hope for a good day? A good doctor's visit, a good news report, a good weather? Where does your hope come from? Because Romans 10, 11 through 13 says, the scriptures say that no one who has faith will be disappointed. No matter if that person is a Jew or a Gentile, there's only one Lord and He is generous to everyone who asks for His help. All who call out to the Lord will be saved. You may read people that write things that they can change that and they can fix that and they can help you ease to know that certain people will not be saved. Oh yeah? And you can draw comfort from that because there are certain people that you don't want saved. Which is a sad thing because Jesus died for everybody. He wants everybody in the kingdom of heaven. There, if, if you trickle one thought through your head ever, I hope that person sees the king, the, the hell. You just separated yourself from Jesus by miles. To be a true follower of Christ is to hope that everybody sees the kingdom of heaven. To know the truth, all who call out will be saved because He is Lord. He is in charge. I am not charge. Oh yeah? And you ain't in charge. Oh yeah? yeah? You see, the thing of it is is that the Lord is in charge because He is Lord. You, you know, a lot of people don't understand this, but the reason that Jesus rose from the dead is because He stayed sinless. When people look at you and they say, oh, Jesus sinned, he did not, because if Jesus had sinned, he would have never rose from the dead. Raising from the dead, dead all authority in the kingdom of heaven, the, all authority in the kingdom of heaven, those are all gifts from the Father for his remaining perfect. Oh yeah? And that qualifies that he is Lord. And the one that is Lord says that all who call out on the Lord will be saved. I don't need to walk the beach today and think because I screwed up yesterday, I'm going to hell. I do not have to sit in fear that there's a God who can't wait to destroy everything about me, who wants to punish me. There's a God there with His Son that wants to give me everything and wants to shower me with love. And isn't there incredible hope in that? Isn't there? And it's life-changing. No one is rejected who calls on the name of the Lord. So who calls? Who calls? Do we trust? Do we call? So we know I can face tomorrow because He's the Lord. I, I can face tomorrow because I'm saved. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Fear is a terrible thing. I, I, I've told you over and over and over. A long time ago, I learned when I had leukemia. I, I, I you know, I can't make fun of kids that are afraid of shots and stuff. You know, I was scared to death. Oh yeah? Are you afraid? You sit out there naturally tough. I'm not buying it. Because it's no fun when they come into a room and they decide that they're going to take a straw from one of the little fruit drinks and stick it in your arm so that you can get blood and all kinds of other stuff. Buddy, you ain't sticking that in my hand. I watched you try to open that Capri Sun for your son for your son the other day. No way. And you know, fear is the difference between man and God. The distance between man and God. And you think about that. You think about the disciples. When the disciples were with Jesus, what were they afraid of? Nothing. I mean, if they got scared, he fixed it. And they started learning. And then the minute he's going, they're scared to death again. The minute he dies on the cross, they're scared to death. They're hiding and in total fear because they don't, they don't trust that he really is who he says he is. 
And then once the Jesus, once the disciples see the risen Savior, they become like supermen. It's like they, it's like a radioactive spider bit them or something. They're not afraid of anything. They're not afraid to get their heads cut off. They're not afraid of anything. They won't deny Jesus for anything. Even though that it's saving them from terrible pain and saving their lives when they're given the opportunity to deny Jesus, they won't. Because you know, once they knew he lived, all fear is gone. Oh yeah? Isn't that life changing? And you know, the thing is, the devil, the devil loves, he loves the scares. He loves the scares, doesn't he? You know, I was at this lady the other day, I checked in at the motel. They have a new thing now that you have to go to the concierge before they give you the room key. So I go to the concierge and she says, well, Mr. Brown, it's so good to have you and your sons here. And she said, uh, I, I just need to know what day this week you'd like to get with us because we would like to sell you some property. And I said, really? She said, oh, we'll give you tickets to this, tickets to this, and tickets to this. And she said, and, and I'm going to just come and sit with us for about two hours. We're going to try to sell you tickets to some properties. I said, I'm a minister. And I said, the big one's leaving for college next Friday. And we're going to be in loan to the United States, debt to the United States like we can't believe to pay off because we haven't heard Preachers don't pay off their college loans in their first year in the ministry. And I said, well, we don't, we don't have a dime to do. Well, nobody does. It's my job to set these things up so that you come and you can enjoy these tickets I'll give you. And I said, ma'am, I'm sorry. I said, I, I just really want to be on the beach. And I'm basically sitting there saying, can I have my room key? And she looks at me and she says, here's your keys. Be careful. There's millions of jellyfish. And people have been getting stung like crazy. I said, Lou, get her. I'm not ashamed 
To not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ means that I've learned that I am not frightened. And that I have the complete understanding that I am saved. I am saved. What can harm me? Nothing. The devil and all his minions, he can't do anything to me. I'm protected by Jesus Christ and everything that I do. I'm saved. My faith gives me good news. Having faith gives me good news. I can face anything. I'm not afraid. Because I know He holds the future. People really want to know the future. Don't they? They go get their futures told. They read their horoscopes. They, they're scared to go out. And, uh, and people want to know what tomorrow holds. What does tomorrow hold? When I was a kid, there was that Jean Dixon, I think was her name. And in January, I would tell you what Jean Dixon you know, was telling him was going to happen in the next year. And, you know, there's all kinds of stuff like Hitler was still alive. He's working at a car wash down in Vera Beach in Florida. And, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Really big stuff. And people wanted to know all that stuff, and they paid money for it. Because you can still buy that newspaper thing today. It's still out there. But uh, people really want to know the future. What does tomorrow hold? And you know the thing is, we know what tomorrow holds. Revelation 22, 12 through 17. Then I was told I am coming soon. And when I come, I will reward everyone for what they have done. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. God will bless all who have washed their robes. They will each have the right to eat fruit from the tree that gives life, and they can enter the gates of the city. But outside the city will be dogs, witches, immoral people, murderers, idol worshippers, and everyone who loves to tell lies and do wrong. I am Jesus, and I am the one who sent my angel to tell all of you these things for the churches. I am David's great descendant, and I am also the bright morning star. The spirit of the bride say, come. Everyone who hears this should say, come. If you are thirsty, come. If you want life, give me water, come and take it. It's free. I have eternal life. I will never die. I've been promised this. And I know that He is coming soon. He is coming soon. You know, that, that, that's what we need to know. That's what, we, what makes us happy. That's what changes. That's what gives us hope. The fact that no matter how bad this world gets, how bad this world is, the hope that is Jesus Christ is coming for all of us. To be with Him forever. Everyone will be rewarded and everyone will have eternal life. What an incredible promise. And finally, all of this makes worth life worth living. You ever hear people say, why should I get up tomorrow? I don't even know why I should get up tomorrow. Really? I'll give you the example of the reason. You get up tomorrow and you serve the Lord. Oh yeah? Why do I want to get up tomorrow? Because I want to serve the Lord. I want to serve the Master who has done all of these things for me. I want to live to make Him happy. I want to be what He wants me to be. You see, it changes us when we know what He has done for us. When we know who He is. He changes us. And you know what that change does? We live for Him. We never quit living for Jesus. That's, that's what we do. We live for Jesus. You know, how many times in a day do you actually tell somebody about Jesus? You may say, well, hey, I'm not the kind of person who can just go and start talking about Jesus. We ever go and just start loving on people? Because trust me, they see that difference. They see a difference in you. You know, I watch the people down there, and when the maids are getting on an elevator, do you hold the door for them and help them lift their stuff and put them in the elevator? You see, as soon as you do that, do you know who they see? They see Jesus. You don't have to tell them Jesus. Because I watch other people when they go to the elevator, and they'll say, excuse me, we're staying here, paying to stay here. Can you get that off so my family can get on the elevator? Do you think I'm making that story up? No, they see people with a different color and they can be rude and nasty because they just they're just peons. They're just cleaning my sheets. I 
and he said, well, you go and treat them with love and ask them how they're doing today and ask them what they're doing for you. He's able to see Jesus. You think average people do that? No, they don't. I just got down and watched them for a week. It turns my stomach to watch how people can be. Watch how rude people are. Watch how unloving people are. You see, we live for Jesus. Once we start following him. Acts 28, 30 through 31 is a little story. For two years, Paul stayed in a rented house and welcomed everyone who came to see him. He bravely preached about God's kingdom and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ and no one tried to stop him. And you say, Dan, isn't it? Wow, that's a weird scripture to go with that. Well, I'll explain a little bit. Paul's in Rome. And he's waiting to be executed for his moment with Caesar to try to tell Caesar about Jesus. He's living there. He had a horrible moment with the church. He told them all about going to Rome and they cried and begged him not to go. And he said, hey. He said, it's what Jesus wants. And on death row, knowing that he's on death row for Jesus, he's not on death row for murder. He's not on death row for robbery. Paul is on death row for teaching about Jesus. He happily taught about Jesus every day. He bravely preached. It changed his entire life. And so we look at the four things that we looked at today. We can face tomorrow. All fear is gone. I know my future. And life becomes worth living because he lives. And it is. It's changing. It's life changing. We don't get sucked up in all the stuff of the world. It's such a beautiful hymn. And the reason it's such a beautiful hymn is it's such a beautiful message in our lives. Because like I said, I could walk up and down the beach and I could sing an incredible sermon. Not for anybody else, not to teach you about us, but for me. Don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Remember who's in charge. Remember how much he loves you. Remember what he done for you, did for you. And remember... But he lives. He lives. So can you sing because he lives? Easy to sing a song. You know, I, I laughed. I went to a conference. I started out in my first church. And they sung the doc doxology every Sunday when the offerings were coming forward. Okay? And I don't know how many of you. Did you sing the doxology years ago? Praise God from the Lord. And, and this guy said, you know what? He said, new people that are coming to church don't know it. And he said, people have been going to church for 50 years don't know it. And I was one of the people who said, what? He said, 50 people have been going to church for 50 years don't know the doxology. He said, give you a test. Take your people in your church and take them off in the corner. And say, say the doxology to me. Sing it. They couldn't remember it without other people. If they had other people, they couldn't remember. So that means they really were living it. It was just something they said along with people. Oh, yeah? You ever have stuff like that? You can say along with people? Song on the radio you really like, but you can only sing it if it's on the radio? You can't sing it if you can't sing along with the guy? And there was people who didn't know the doxology. They're just standing there like,
I wanted to teach it right there. <laughs> and then, there's a little girl, about three year old, over this gate. Now, the only way to get off the beach into the pool area to shower off to get in the room was this gate. And there's about 22 people in line. And this mother's sitting there with like a three year old girl, and she's playing with the gate. And nobody's moving, and she's